New poll reveals that Americans have historically low so-called Islamophobic beliefs, or views, I should say. According to a 2020 poll conducted by the Brookings Institution, favorable views of Muslims in the United States have risen from 58% in 2016 to 78% in 2020, excuse me, 2022, with unfavorable views declining from 41% to 22% in that same time period. The poll also found that Americans from both parties are becoming more open to the idea of electing a Muslim president, with the number of Americans who oppose the idea decreasing from 34% to 26%. Additionally, the poll found that a Jewish presidential candidates faced the least opposition from the general American public. The Brookings Institution attributes the decline in anti-Muslim sentiment to former President Donald Trump's targeting of Muslims during his campaign and presidency, producing an effect of the public rallying behind the group. However, the report also acknowledges that incidents of anti-Semitism and attacks against Muslims have risen in the United States. So this is really interesting. Let me unpack like the studies of what this thing from the Brookings Institution found. And I, I like a lot of um, their studies and uh, reports that they put out. So they have been tracking for a while um, how likely uh, different people from different political parties are to vote for a presidential candidate from any given um, religious group. And what's so interesting is that out of every single religious group, you might think, oh, Americans would have the least opposition to electing a Christian as a president, a, a Christian candidate as the president. Not true. Both Republicans and Democrats have the least res opposition to electing a Jewish president. So for every wow. single religious identity, over the years, across uh, across political parties, there has been a decline in opposition to electing someone on the basis of their religious belief. So there used to be higher resistance to someone saying, no, I don't want to elect someone because they're Muslim. No, I don't want to elect someone because they're Jewish. Okay, that's, that's a declining for both parties. It's declining more in the Democrats, but it's still declining for both parties. But then what's so interesting, Armin, the only group that actually has is facing increased opposition to being elected on the basis of their religious identity. Christians. Is evangelical Christians. Amazing. Protestants, it's a down. Catholics, it's a down. But evangelical Christians specifically. I mean, they deserve going it. up. <laughs> What about atheists? Well, that's what I wanted you to show in the picture that I asked you to pull up. Okay. Because the most discriminated against group of potential candidates is atheists. As but. you see on the Why? end of this graph. By far. Wow. Yeah. She is the goddamn Republicans. God damn it, you people. No, but even amongst Democrats they still pull very highly in opposition yeah. to atheists. They'd be more willing, Democrats would be more willing to vote for an atheist than a Mormon or an evangelical no, but, Christian. Wait, the other way around. Uh, they're more willing to wait, vote for a Mormon than an atheist. No, 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 no. Oh. This is, what you see on this graph is the percentage of people who oppose oh. that candidate okay, because of their religious okay. identity. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Oppose, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so... For Democrats, uh, wow, not, wow, 20% of Democrats apparently are against atheists for for their atheism. Like, they're like, yep, no, you're an atheist, screw you, we won't vote for you. What the hell, 20%? Specifically to the presidential office, maybe if it was a different Why? office. Why? I know, but this answered, remember, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks before we were talking about how congress is not reflective of how irreligious the american population is becoming 
Like we have historically high rates of irreligiosity, but we only have two openly non-religious people in Congress, which to be fair is actually historic in and of itself. Like it used to be nothing and now there actually is some representation. So, okay. But, and I was just so frustrated as to why, well, this is obviously answers as to why. <laughs> Like, we know that there are a lot more irreligious people in Congress. Statistically, it would make sense. And also, like, I just think it's very likely if you look at, like, the policies and some of these um, representatives, like, specifically as individuals, I think a lot of them are probably irreligious. But they're not going to come out and say it because of stuff like this. I know, but even if it's because... It's, I don't think it's because of their religion. For Democrats, like, they're... If it was because of their them themselves being Christian, they're not opposing Muslims, right? They're also not opposing agnostics, okay? But they, for some reason, they have a problem with atheists. Look at this. What the hell? <laughs> I don't understand. What did the, what the hell did the atheists do? And also, look at the the only thing that goes above fifty percent anywhere in this graph is atheists uh, is republicans opposition to atheists mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the republicans are at war with atheists look it's the only one that i is know and they're dirty. coming really far out and saying it like charlie kirk had this whole thing with tucker carlson recently mm -hmm. where tucker carlson was saying how he's like gotten to a point where he has like no tolerance for atheism and all this stuff and i know all these like right-leaning and center-right people who were just you know really upset on twitter because they're like you guys don't understand how you you are shooting yourselves in the foot because our country is going to continue to be less religious and yeah i mean we're right leaning we want to be succeeding and you guys are screwing us <laughs> by closing the door for all these people who feel politically homeless because of the nonsense on the left like yeah. why are you shutting them out this is our opportunity to wield them in but that you know that's yeah. their prerogative actually um, that's a good point because this could be you know let's turn this into not a weakness of atheists political the political force of atheists uh, in the u.s let's turn this into a weakness of republicans like let's make it let's i mean i you know what i was gonna say like oh do we need to change this but screw you okay let's let's not uh let, i hope <laughs> i hope republicans continue to hate to alienate on the non-religious yes so that they become irrelevant because atheism is growing in the u.s right so keep alienating us so that you become irrelevant okay so screw the republicans i am more offended with the democrats okay i am more offended with the fact that democrats are anti-atheists okay by the way i don't like the title of this uh, new segment about islamophobia okay this is like uh, about it was supposed to be muslimophobia right but okay. i don't know but yeah. armin for the sake of identification it's easier to say islamophobia in quotations okay because then oh, it yeah. just more easily communicates you know language is about effective communication so anyways one thing i wanted to get back to on the islamophobia angle of this so-called aka what we call anti-muslim bigotry hi kca randy good to see you um is that we used to be have a really like the acceptance of Muslims used to only be at 58% and even historically lower, much more before that. Now we're at 78%. So that's like a vast majority in the United States, which is fantastic. But what's really interesting, so they were looking at general acceptance, and then they were also looking at acceptance through the lens of what kind of political candidate would people be willing to vote for. And on both of those, they are trending in a really positive direction. But what's interesting is that we have seen a rise in uh, anti-Muslim hate crimes. And also, apparently, the ADL said that they're, they've been recording anti-Jewish hate crimes since, like, 1969 or something, maybe 1979. I can't quite remember. And the year last year was the highest number that they have recorded since they've started recording. So there's been a huge percentage increase in the number of anti-Semitic attacks that have been happening. But what's interesting, and I think this is really important to highlight, is that the report found that 
there's a vertical expansion, not a horizontal expansion of these views. What does that mean? So based on the polling data showing that our my country is becoming less and less bigoted towards these groups on average, then why do we see these rise in hate crimes? And so they're saying horizontal expansion is the number of people that have these views, right? And we're not seeing horizontal expansion. We're actually seeing horizontal shrinkage. But what we're seeing is vertical expansion. So that means that of the people that hold those views, they are getting more intense. They mm. are getting more outspoken. Right. And so that, and they maybe feel emboldened or maybe forced into a position that they have to do these really, really extreme things, right? Right. So um, just because we're seeing this rise doesn't actually mean that the rhetoric that we're seeing popularized so much nowadays isn't actually being bought by the population. So in a way, I found this very encouraging because we are seeing a lot of things in the media nowadays that are like very scary, especially with like Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, like all that stuff. But the good news is, is that the general population is it's not actually gaining traction there. So I would consider that a positive. Yeah. Also, just to be clear, okay, the only issue I had with with this whole thing was the fact that they were calling it Islamophobic views, okay, to people. But this, um, in general, this is a positive, right? Like I hope, like people, I don't, I hope I don't need to tell you guys here because if I have to tell you guys, that means you guys don't know my, well, my, you know, for people who don't know. Um, we love seeing tolerance of Muslims in, in increasing, okay? But we love um, seeing Muslims feeling more welcome and more accepted in, a, in society, okay? We just, the anti-Muslim bigotry that exists, we just don't like calling that Islamophobia because as, it's not about Islam, it's about tolerating Muslims, okay? Not tolerating people's uh, views, Right? Like we tolerate Christians, we don't tolerate Christianity. Okay. And it's okay, for example, for religious people not to tolerate atheism as long as they tolerate atheists. Okay. It's completely fine for you to have a, a problem with atheism. Okay. As long as you're friendly and accepting of atheists in society, we have no problem with you being intolerant towards atheism. In fact, technically, you should be intolerant towards atheism if you believe in God. Does it make any sense for you not to? Okay, that's another problem. Okay, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're getting but, good at catching yourself mid tangent. Wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> you're like I'm going to cut myself off. Yes. Yes. Um. So and also it's so good to see that the society in general responds in support. Like when you when you see increased attacks on on a group of people, like when Trump goes after Muslims. It's so heartwarming to see that the reaction of society is, you know what, we're going to increase, like, it, like the hate is not going to increase, like, it's not like a chain reaction, like, people have, like, okay, we need to protect these people, okay? So, it's, you know, that should increase some of your, you know, hope for society, because usually these days we think, like, everything is crap, people, like, the fact that that's the or organic reaction of, a, of, a, of society should, should... It's, it's I know because your in America they're like, oh my God, you guys are so Islamic, but uh, Islamophobic, anti-Muslim bigots, da da da. But in response to Trump, we actually rallied behind the community and became observably less bigoted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, there were a we couple of comments I wanted to highlight. Mariam yeah. is saying, if Americans were faced with fascist Islam, they would be equally against it. Evangelical Christianity is leaning way too hard on the Christian theocracy and fascism here in the United States. So she's saying that's why there is this uptick out of all the groups. The uptick in opposition to a religious group is the evangelical Christians. And there's well, lots of pulling to support what Mariam says. But why is the reason why there's like intolerance towards atheists? Is there any reason for that? Like, do they provide an explanation? Oh, no. No, why, no they, they, they barely, barely touched on atheism. They, See, they, even the like, poll doesn't They come. barely like, touched on it. Oh, look at, like, look, look at how much anti-atheist discrimination exists, right? First of all, it seems to be one of the most, the most hated group, okay? 
because like okay let's bring it up back up here okay if you look at the total numbers they didn't look. show what the acceptance of atheism is in the general population though this is just specifically I, for electing i know i know i know let me make my point though okay look among all the groups okay the, the gray one is the total like both from democrat and republican the atheists are the you know, when it comes to not voting for people because of the views, the, th the atheists have the low, the, the highest amount of uh, opposition. OK, They're, it's worse than Muslims, Mormons, agnostic, evangelical, Christians, whatever, everybody. OK, but even though they're the worst group and you would think like a poll like this would want to explain, oh, let, let's look at the most discriminated group and explain what's happening here. But they are so the atheists are so unimportant and so insignificant in caring that even the people who are conducting the study were like didn't didn't think like they deserve any attention to explain why they're the most hated group here like they, so the the people who are being studied seem to be not caring about atheists but even the people who are conducting the polls seem to be like like well they're atheists of course like who gives a crap we the atheists are one of the most discriminated groups in the world and this needs to be turned into a human rights movement. Like it's such a it's such a, a common and even the atheists are like, well, yes, yeah. Like if you're like, oh, Muslims are being hated or discriminated, against. like oh, even atheists, are like oh, wow, that's that's a problem. We need to fix that. But like, oh, they're doing it to atheists. So like, eh, yeah, sure, whatever. Even atheists don't feel like that's a bit important thing. Well, because it's for most of them, it's a lack of identity instead of a positive identity. It's like, yeah, I'm non-religious. It's not something to rally behind. But there are some That's, people like you who it very much is a positive identity for them. Yeah, but making it a lack of identity instead of an identity is how you don't get political movements happening. Like That's how you get women losing their uh, rights to abortion. That's how you get religion in school. That's how you get religion in politics. No, okay? I mean, because I you haven't, I'm because, just talking no, about how people experience well, it in, after they leave religion. Okay, well, let me make my point because I wasn't opposing to what you're saying. I accept what you're saying. I didn't. I wasn't saying. I wasn't disagreeing with you. And I was saying that explains why we don't form communities and groups and mobilization and activism around us because we're like, oh, this is like, it's just atheism. I I stopped. I stopped believing in religion. So, so now I don't need to like form bonds and communities and activism and all that stuff around it. Uh, because the Christians and the Muslims and the Mormons and the Hindus and the Buddhists, well, not the Buddhists, maybe the Buddhists, Buddhists in Thailand, uh, and uh, and the Catholics and the Jewish people, they are doing that. They are doing that. And that's how you keep losing your rights, even though you're the fastest growing demographic in the world, right? You're the fastest growing demographic in the world, but you keep getting dunked on like this. Look at this, right? That's how you lose your rights, people. That's how you lose secularism. That's how you lose. That's how religion continues to maintain dominance over your lives, right? So, fix this, atheist. Stop. <laughs> like, be, like maybe you should, you should start getting fix this, and you know, you maybe maybe you need start. You start. You need to start getting butt hurt. Okay, like maybe like you guys have have you start. You should start getting offended. Like you you have had such a bad experience with religious people getting offended over everything. You have you don't understand that of being offended is not always bad. There's some utility in being offended. Okay, when atheists are being so, this is discrimination. Atheists are one of the most discriminated groups in the world, if not the most, and it's normalized. Like people don't even get angry over that. Like people don't even have a gut like disgust reaction towards that. The same level of discrimination. If you if you get exposed to it, if it's towards the Jews, you feel like disgusted. You're like ew. Ew, anti-Semitism. Ew, gross, disgusting. But if you, you hopefully if you, you feel that way, <laughs> hopefully you feel that way. Yeah. But if the same type of be, like phrases, it's, it, like the the way people describe Jews or Muslims or you know Hindus, the same disgusting gut reaction that you get, if the same phrases or the same actions were used against atheists, even atheists don't feel much. They feel they don't feel attacked. They don't feel like discriminate they don't feel offense maybe 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 start exploring being butt hurt okay okay be get butt hurt like we were like we kept on telling religious people that stop getting butt hurt all the time over everything 
I think our community has de has decided that we should not get offended or butthurt over anything. Okay, but, but maybe you need a little bit of butthurt. Okay, try it. <laughs> the way you said explore butthurt. <laughs> explore it as an option. <laughs> yeah. There's a comment by Shiny D. I don't know if it's real news or not, but she keeps on commenting and like you want. By the way, Shiny, Shiny D, like I, I don't understand. I don't know if you understand. You keep uh keep asking us to read my comment, read my comment, highlight my comment. Like we're in the middle of reading, and you know what? I'm not gonna highlight your comment. Okay? No, it doesn't make any sense. It's nonsense. Yeah, but even if it may, if I was gonna highlight it after we finish the segment. But you seem to not understand that we're in the middle of explaining a news item, so we're not going to stop and highlight something completely irrelevant to the news item that they were discussing. You know how many times you ask us to highlight this and stop everything to to highlight your nonsense? And now because of the insi your insistence, I'm not going to highlight it because I had it start to maybe discuss it after we did, we we finished the news item, but now we're not gonna. Okay. Maybe learn. Maybe this is a moment for you to learn a lesson. Okay, you know you don't interrupt people in the middle. Of it. You you keep it on topic. Okay. Wait, can we? I want to take a slight detour. Something I don't remember has commented on my pillow. Okay, I oh, have this finally, squishy, yeah. and it's a. Uh, I don't know what you call this kind of animal. A waxel. You know they're like the little amphibians. I think that look very funny. Anyways, I need help naming him. Actually, no, this is a girl. So if you guys come up with good names, oh, uh, yeah. please put them yeah. in the live chat and maybe you can name my stuffed animal that I have for emotional support because I'm in pain today. <laughs> 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 so if you're like, what does she have? This is my emotional support. <laughs> I'm glad that's because something... of endometriosis. <laughs> yeah, you were waiting for somebody to notice, weren't you? I'm glad you did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's adorable though. It's so cute. I don't know why something could be so um, unrealistic and still get our. You know what I, mean? I don't understand. Like it's, it's something about making things round and then making the faces very simple that because makes it us think that they're babies. Babies, you're right. Why. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. And babies right. are round and have big eyes because we're more likely to protect them. So a couple of people came up with this. Name, Axototis. <laughs> I don't understand. Oxylani. Name. Jesus, name. It's a girl. It's a girl. Um, Oxylani. <laughs> Oxylotl coming. Okay, okay. A cute uh, name, not Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> the Persians in the chat. You can <laughs> so predictable. <laughs> I wow. love it. <laughs> mm. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.